Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at an all-in-one from Lenovo. This is their Idea Center 520S and look how slim this thing is. The entire computer with an i7 processor is in this little hump here in the back. This is really not much larger than a 23-inch monitor, which is actually what it is. Very small and compact, especially for people in small spaces, but pretty powerful computer under the hood here that we'll be exploring in this review. And it's got an HDMI input, so you can actually use this as a monitor with a game console or something like that. I'll show you how all that works here in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. When we're done with it, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This costs $949 as configured. You might find some for more or less depending on the different configuration options that Lenovo tends to make available to folks. But as you see it here, it'll cost $949. 23 inch display as I mentioned it is an IPS display it is running at 1080p so it's a full high definition display it's a matte display though so it doesn't reflect back all that much light so if you have a lot of windows in your house for example you won't see a lot of light reflecting back to your eyes from the windows behind you which is often a good thing and even though it's a matte display it does have touch capability so you do have the ability to uh, use your fingers to navigate if you wish they do pack in a uh, cheap keyboard and mouse in the box they are wireless but not great but it does uh, get what you need accomplished out of a single box so you will get the keyboard and mouse built into it this one as configured has an i7 7500u dual core processor that chip is something we typically see in some mid to high end laptops so it's decent performance here uh, it is a laptop chip but these days the laptop chips are pretty darn fast and as you'll see in our testing it's pretty good for doing school work and web browsing and other stuff 8 gigs of RAM in this one. It has a 1 terabyte spinning hard drive. If you can get one with a solid state drive, I would recommend that just because they uh, tend to load up applications and function a little faster. But if you want capacity, a terabyte is probably good enough for that. Now, there's no optical drive built in, but this one at $949 came with an external DVD burner that you can connect via a USB cable. So you do have the option to uh, connect up some optical discs, if you wish, with a pretty compact device here. You could, of course, also go out and buy yourself a Blu-ray reader and burner if you wanted to watch some Blu-rays on it. But if you got a lot of DVDs or you're making a lot of DVDs, they do give you uh, the burner in the box as an external device. Now, this is a very thin and light all-in-one. And they also got rid of a lot of the bezels around the corners here. And in order to integrate your web camera, there's often uh, some compromises to be made. And that is one area where they had to do that. So on the bottom here is a little drawer that you can push out which contains the web camera. Uh, the problem I have with it though is that because the webcam is at the bottom, uh, you're going to have to look lower uh, to engage your audience if you're communicating via a web conference or something. Otherwise, they're going to be looking up at you. Uh, most uh, all-in-ones, of course, have the camera on the top, but the problem is if you want thin bezels, you can't put the camera on the top, so they did put it down there. So not the best angle for it. It does not support Windows Hello, which is a feature that we've seen on a few other devices with similar webcams cams where uh, you can unlock the computer by facial recognition. This one doesn't support that, but you could, of course, get a uh, webcam that supports that feature as an add-on if you wish. There are, though, two USB 3 ports on either side of the camera here, so you can pop this down and plug in a game controller, for example. Uh, you can plug one in over there or another one on the other side here. Now, there are a few other ports to take a look at on here, so let's spin the computer around to the back and see what we got. Uh, so we've got two more USB ports. I do have an external hard drive plugged into one of those, and my uh, wireless keyboard and mouse are plugged into the other one. There is a gigabit Ethernet jack back here for directly connecting up to a network. You have an HDMI port, and this is kind of cool because this acts as both an input or an output. So you have a choice. You can plug in an external display to extend your uh, experience if you wish, or you could plug in something like a game console to it. And there's a switch here in the back to toggle it back and forth. So right now I've got my uh, Nintendo Switch here running a game. And what I can do here, because I already have it plugged in, is just dock my Switch with the uh, Switch dock here. And I can go into the back of the monitor and hit the toggle switch. This will switch it into monitor mode. And I should now, hopefully, yep, there we go, see my game popping up on the screen. And I can go ahead here and continue uh, playing my game. You can hear how loud the speakers are in the front here. Uh, of the display. So pretty cool that even though this is probably not the best gaming computer, uh, as you'll see in a few minutes, it actually does quite well with a game console paired up with it. And if you have a kid with a small room or a kid going off to college, 
Uh, you can give them a computer here that can do all the computer stuff and then a separate game console for playing the games. And I know when I was growing up, the computer was for doing work and the ColecoVision and the Atari and all the other junk I've got back there was used for gaming. And there's a good way that you can maybe police your kid's gaming habits a little bit better uh, because the computer won't be all that great for gaming, but it does have the ability to also act as a monitor for your game consoles. And when you want to switch back, uh, just push the button here and you're back into PC mode. The computer remained on when I did this, so you don't lose anything that you're working on when you switch back and forth to different modes. And you can also have the monitor work when the computer portion of it is off. But the only issue I'm seeing with the monitor mode here is that when I go into the game, the uh, volume here is blasting at me and there's no separate volume control for the monitor mode. Uh, so if your game console doesn't support that directly as far as lowering the output going through the HDMI cable, uh, one solution would be to go in the back here and uh, just plug in a pair of headphones to the headphone jack there and that will at least uh, get the volume off or uh, more controllable with a pair of headphones, especially if you've got something with a volume control on it. So it's my only gripe with it is that if you don't have a way to control the volume coming out of the device you're using, uh, it's going to be coming at you full blast. But the overall audio quality while loud is not all that great. So if you do want better fidelity, uh, plug in a pair of speakers into that uh, headphone jack in the back there to get it and that'll give you some better control also over the output volume when you have things plugged into monitor mode. I am quite pleased though with how sturdy it is on my desk. I've got a very uh, rickety desk here that tends to bounce around quite a bit, but that uh, bouncing really gets absorbed pretty quickly by the stand here. It really doesn't bounce around all that much even when pressing on the display. You don't have much in the way of range for uh, the display's angle here, but you do have some decent angle adjustments. There's no uh, up or down motion on it, unfortunately. And I don't think you can mount this on a visa mount. So it looks like the stand is what you're going to be working with here. Uh, would have been nice maybe to have that option just given how slim this is. You might be you could have been able to wall mount it, I guess. Uh, the fan for the computer here is on the top, so you definitely want to keep that area clear, which shouldn't be hard to do. It's not all that loud. In fact, I'm hearing the uh, hard drive more than I'm hearing the fan running, even under load. When you do first turn it on, that fan will come on full blast. It'll really make some noise initially, but after that, it settles down and you rarely hear it. And like I said, I'm hearing the hard drive uh, whirring because I do have the mechanical drive in here uh, more than I'm hearing the fan. So overall, uh, very slim and uh, seems to be holding up quite well on uh, many of the tasks that I've been throwing at it. So let's take a look now and see how well it performs. We'll take a look at web browsing, some office work, and a few light games and maybe some movie watching too. So let's have at it. Okay, so let's take a look at some YouTube video first here. We've got a 1080p 60 video playing back from YouTube. One of the things that these new i7 processors handle quite well is some of the higher end video. Uh, this is working fine. We're not having any drop frames or anything like that. And I really like the display itself. It's got a really nice balance of color here, good contrast. It really looks pretty nice for uh, watching this kind of stuff. So I don't think you'll have any issues with uh, browsing YouTube or Netflix or anything like that. We'll head over to the NASA homepage. And by the way, we're on wireless right now. It's got wireless AC built in. So it is uh, very quick and responsive here as I'm browsing around the web. And you shouldn't have any problems going to your favorite websites or doing any of the stuff that you're normally doing on the web. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 147, which is right in line with where I would expect it to be. And if you have work to do, it's also pretty quick at uh, doing Microsoft Word and Office tasks. So Excel and Word and PowerPoint, all of those things should be functional on here without any uh, performance issues whatsoever. Now I mentioned at the outset that this really is not a gaming PC. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't have a discrete graphics processor or GPU built in to help the games with 3D graphics. It relies on its Intel chip to do that. Now some lower end games here like Minecraft are able to function quite well with that Intel chip. We're getting a solid 60 frames per second here out of Minecraft without any optimizations installed. And in case you're wondering, I don't have it locked at 60. This is just where it is ending up in its performance and it runs great. But other games that require a little more horsepower uh, will not run so well. So all the current games that you might be able to get on your PlayStation that also have PC PC versions available will not run as well on here. Let me do show you though one game that can run but with reduced settings and image quality and that's Rocket League. Now Rocket League is a great example of a game that runs pretty well on this hardware but you have to turn all of the settings down which makes the game uh, look pretty lousy actually. So I've got everything turned down here. We do have it running at 1080p 
And if I jump out of the settings screen here, we are running the game at about 30 to 40 frames per second, but it might be hard to see on camera, but a lot of the uh, lines here are very jagged. You don't get the uh, really polished image and look that you might have on a PlayStation 4, for example. And that's where I think this computer works well for college students, for example, and others who are space constrained, because if you do have that PlayStation 4, you can just plug it into the back of this and use it as a monitor, so you're only bringing up the game console and the computer, as opposed to have to also lug up a TV with you uh, to your dorm room. I think it could really work well in that scenario. Also, as I mentioned, a great way to regulate your kids' gaming because you can uh, take the PlayStation out of the room and because this computer, while it can download all the games they want to play, it really can't play them all that well because it is lacking that GPU. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 5,996. And this did appear to perform about where other similarly equipped computers performed on that graphical benchmark. So it's about where we would expect it to be. I do believe there is a 16 gigabyte version of this computer available that might be running in a dual channel configuration that will give some slightly better performance on that graphics test. But even with that, you're not going to see AAA titles playing all that well on here. But it does very well with media playback. And I've got our Jellyfish test file that I like to run here. This is a 140 megabits per second 4K file at 10 bit encoded with HEVC, which usually chokes older computers. This one plays it back just fine because of some new features that are in uh, this current generation of Intel processors. So no drop frames, playing back just fine. I'll put a link to where you can find this file and some other ones so you can test your computer's performance as well. Uh, but if it can play this back, it can play just about anything back. Now this is only a 1080p display, so it is downscaling to 1080p from 4K, but you can hook up a 4K display to the HDMI port on this, and it's often a good exercise to see if this can play this back as well as you would hope it would, and it can. It also plays back Blu-ray files just fine here, so I've got a, a Blu-ray movie running here, and this is playing back without issue. Issue. So if you did attach a uh, Blu-ray Blu -ray drive to this computer, uh, you shouldn't have any trouble playing back those movies at 1080p. So all in, I think it's a pretty decent computer here. Nice and compact. I don't like the webcam placement, so if you don't like it either, you might want to consider uh, adding on an additional one. I also wish there were some volume controls when you're in that monitor mode because my uh, Nintendo Switch was really blaring at me when I plugged it in, and there's really no way to turn the volume down on the Switch. So some things let you do it, other things don't so you might want to have a pair of speakers or something where you can adjust the volume attached. Uh, the good news is that the headphone jack on here uh, responds in both monitor mode and computer mode. So if you do just plug in a, uh, anything into that port, it will turn the speakers off. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But all in, I really do like the form factor. I think it's very good for college and other folks who are space constrained. The performance on this is great. It should be very good for doing video editing and a lot of other higher end tasks thanks to its i7 processor. And it's something I think I can recommend. Lenovo did, uh, does make actually a gaming version of something like this. So if you like this smaller form factor and all-in-one, uh, they do have one that does very well at gaming with a, a huge desktop GPU built right into it. And I'll put a link to that one down below in the video description too. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Tangential Soup Podcast, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.